Hi guys, it's John here, and this is a benchmark update for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So the Snapdragon has finally had its June update. It has taken quite a while, and in that time, the Exynos over here on the left has actually had two updates itself. So they're currently on the following software versions, as you can see, and I will put that up on the screen to make it a bit easier to read, just in case you can't see it. But yeah, I'm not quite sure why the Exynos has ended up with two, but they do seem to both be ending with AVF1 now. So what I'm going to do is obviously just run through the test. We'll do it in the old fashioned way here and I will actually show the tests as they happen. So we will still use the ClickMate Automator just to automate everything. I've set the light control here so that both are on 100% brightness. And yeah, we'll just see how they both do in this month's tests. Okay, so the three Geekbench CPU tests have finished and we can see here the results. And sadly, we can see that the Exynos has gone back down to not having a signal core faster than the Snapdragon, whereas last month it was actually faster for the first time ever. So we can see here that we've ended up with an average of a single core score of 1221 on the Snapdragon. And the mod core is still winning quite nicely on the Exynos here with an average of 3217. That is a small decrease there from last month, like I say, for the Exynos, and a huge, nice increase there for the Snapdragon overall. Temperature-wise, it looked like the Snapdragon was actually a bit cooler in the Geekbench CPU test this time. So the Exynos getting a bit warmer, topping out at about 39 degrees, and the Snapdragon did end up at 39 on the final test. Okay, so we will move on to the Geekbench Compute test now, and we'll see how that does. Okay, so here are the Geekbench compute results, and we can see that the Exynos is still doing very nicely here with an average score of 8034, whereas the Snapdragon has only managed an average of 6126. Temperature-wise, both stayed around the same temperature, 36 degrees, and although it was actually a decrease of nearly 4% from last month, the Exynos is still beating the Snapdragon quite easily here. Okay, we're now going to move on to the Antutu test and we're going to run three of these in a row and we'll just see how they do. Right, so the Antutu tests have finished and we are running version 9.39 currently. And we can see here that the Snapdragon has taken back its reign of the Antutu champion here with a final average score of 849,569, whereas the Exynos has gone down to 834,900. You can see here the average temperatures as well, around 37 to 38, so not getting too hot here. But sadly, because of the decrease here of 2.23% on the Exynos, it is now losing in the Antutu benchmark. Okay, so we're going to move on to the stress test now and we'll just see how they both compare in this. Okay, so here are the stress test results and we can see compared to May's results, there are some strange differences here. So we start off quite nicely here on test one and this all looks a lot better on average compared to May's where we were seeing you know, a lot more 
around the 60% mark. We can see here there's lots more better performance up to around 70 to 80%. And the cores as well, you can see doing okay, but then they do seem to go down and get throttled quite a lot after the first couple of minutes. So we can see some better throttling or lack of throttling maybe on the May update here. It didn't seem to be so restrictive until at least towards the end, but here we're getting restricted a lot sooner, certainly on that core seven. So the second test, again, we start off pretty well here, well above 80%. In fact, it's well above 80% for most of the tests. So that's really nice. But then we do get this massive drop down here, down to 45% at the end. You can see that core seven again, clocking straight down to about 900 megahertz. So I don't know what happens there, whether it's something to do with the test itself, but we didn't see anything like that in last month's test and we had a lot better performance overall, I'd say on average in the second test in May. So third test, again, we do start off a bit odd here and then head up to well over 80. And this is probably the highest I've seen the Exynos performance wise, but then we do get this dip again here at around the seven, eight minute mark. And for a couple of, well, for just over a minute or so, it's around 40% performance. So I don't know again what's happening here, but then we do get back up to just over 60 and then over 80 for the final bit of the test. But if you compare that to May, that's a lot worse, I'd say, overall compared to the May benchmark. We can see, although it was hovering around 60 to 70, at least it was staying within that sort of border. So we have a look at the Snapdragon results. We can see the performance here is very sort of sporadic, I'd say, in comparison to the May update. There's a lot of uh, ups and downs here, and it doesn't seem to be as stable performance-wise at least, but it is better performance overall than the Exynos, I'd say. It is getting a lot higher and doing well in test one. But yeah, the cores here you can see are going all over the shop, so I'm not quite sure uh, why it's gotten like this, but it does seem that it's probably better than it was in May for the cores. We did have this clocking here, but uh, we've seen in the past that the Snapdragon has managed you know, straight lines across the board, so it is definitely throttling quite a lot. Test two, again, similar to the May update here, but we do get some strange bits at the end where it doesn't really know what it's doing, but it is sort of hovering around the 60% mark overall. Cores, again, looking pretty similar to last month's, maybe a bit less clocking overall, but uh, it is, like I say, a bit sporadic. As we can see from the cores in the third and final test, they're going all over the place. And although we're used to seeing that on the Exos, it is a shame that the Snapdragon is also doing that as well. Performance wise though, it's doing pretty well. And I'd say the third test performed a lot better than it did in last month's. We can see here dipping and peaking at around 45% to 60%. Whereas here we are staying well above 60%, well, mostly above 60% for the majority of the tests and up until the end. So that's a much better result overall for the Snapdragon. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to the Slingshot Extreme test and we'll just see how they both compare here. Right, okay, so the three tests have finished and we can see here the average result and there has been a change. So Graphics S2 has gone back across to the Snapdragon as being the best score, but the Exynos has won on all of the other tests with an actual increase of nearly 4%. So obviously the physics have done quite a lot better here than the Snapdragon with a score of 79, 45 and 25 versus 66, 37 and 20. And interesting to see it's still beating the Snapdragon in the first graphics test as well, which in the past it hasn't been able to do. So it's been some good tweaking, I think, I guess going on there. And we can also see the temperatures here are always lower on the Exynos. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. And this is gonna loop, I think it's 20 times the Wildlife Extreme Test 
and we'll just see what the best loop and the lowest loop and how stable they both are when they've both completed. Okay, so the extreme stress test has finished and we can see here that the best loop does go to the Snapdragon with 2038, whereas the lowest loop or the lowest best loop goes to the Exynos with 1347. Stability wise, the best stability has gone to the Exynos with 67.90. Okay, so it's also worth bearing in mind here after this test, you can see the batteries on both phones are currently 49 and 44. So there is still a 5% difference in battery life on both of these phones. I did take the SIMs out of both phones and I tried to, you know, I always try and keep them the same as possible. So they've both got the same apps installed, etc., and set up exactly the same as much as I can. The Exynos will be doing a bit more because I do use that as my main phone. So it's got WhatsApp and other things syncing on there. But yeah, it's interesting that the Snapdragon is still using more battery power than the Exynos. I did do a full battery test on these two phones. So I'll put a link to that in the top right if you want to check that out. It's quite interesting to see how they both perform. So overall, the Exynos is still beating the Snapdragon overall in all the tests, specifically with those Slingshot Extreme tests that have uh, really turned the tide here. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I know other people are getting much better scores on their Antutu benchmarks than I am, but uh, Antutu isn't the be all and end all of things. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Leave any comments you have down below and I'll see you in the next video.